My name is CJ Wilson. I am a pitcher for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, and I'm also a race team owner. Texas drafted me in 2001, but before baseball, before anything, there was, there was cars. Racing was my first passion. I don't think you're relevant once you stop playing baseball. I'm not a good enough player. I'm not a Hall of Famer. So in order for me to have any relevance in racing, in business, whatever, I have to start that stuff now. When I was a kid, I wasn't like Mr. Baseball. You know, I was like really, really into race cars. It's the first thing I ever got into. I mean, literally like two years old, three years old, car noises, you know? I'd go up the stairs and make car noises. I wanted to get a Ferrari Testarossa because Don Johnson drove a Ferrari Testarossa in Miami Vice and he's pretty much the coolest dude on the planet. I asked my dad, I said, hey, you know, how much does one of those cost? How can I get one? He said, uh, it's like $100,000. And I said, well, you know, if I do a lot of chores, do you think I can earn that much money? So I decided to become a baseball player because baseball players make a lot of money. So I was eight years old and I wrote down, I'm gonna be a major league baseball player and then I'll have my dream garage. The Daytona weekend is the biggest sports car weekend for us because it's the opening series for the year. We basically show up with all the work we've done. You know, it's like the first day of school. If you make a good impression, that good impression lasts a really long time. If you make a bad impression, that bad taste sits in your mouth and everybody else's mouth for a while. Every year it seems like we've taken huge steps to get better and we're ready this year. Racing for me is the most alive thing that I do. It's the most interactive, it's the most rewarding, it's the most passionate situation that I'm around. I raced when I was a relief pitcher with the Rangers and they didn't care. They just said they didn't want to hear about it. But once I became a starting pitcher, then they got really weird. They're like, oh wait, hang on a second, you've been racing? You can't do that anymore. And then the Angels really weren't into it at all and they actually hired a private investigator to follow me around. There'd be this dude there looking like Mike Socia almost, like a big Italian guy, wearing a straw hat and an angel's puffy jacket. And I was like, what the hell is this dude doing in Hollywood, like an Equinox? But he's just sitting there and I started getting really creeped out. And then eventually I figured out that that guy worked for the angels. He was a private investigator and he would follow me around. He would like take notes of like when I was there and if I showed up with my leather jacket on and my helmet. And so now I'm focused more on the commercial side of the business and trying to be successful with the team. In 2006, I went out in Texas and the first day I went for a ride. I just rode with this one guy all day just to kind of get a feel for the track and like what was going on. Like the dynamics is like you're in the car and you're like, Ugh! like hits the brakes and you're like, Ugh! like hits the gas and you're like, Ugh! like takes a turn. And it was like a roller coaster, but it was fun. I didn't think I was going to die. I was just like, this is rad. I want to do this. I got my racing license. I went to all the racing schools and then I started renting my race cars out. And then CJ Wilson Racing as a team started in 2010. This year will be our third year with these cars in Grand Am, so we feel like this is a really good jumping point for us to, to make a bigger competitive splash. All right, guys, start the Play ball, right? No, 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 not. I got injured when I was 22. I blew my elbow out in the minor leagues. And I'm like, what am I doing with my time? I have all this free time, I need to start learning again. Most guys get depressed, they get injured, they go play golf, they drink themselves to sleep at night. They're like, my career might never come back, I might be done. And for me, I was like, I've been working on this since I was eight years old, I'm not gonna give up, and I'm not gonna be like you losers and get all depressed. I said, I'm, gonna, I'm still gonna make it. You know, I'm gonna come back even better. The year that I took off, I learned all this stuff and it would keep me away from trouble. It kept me away from knocking up any girls or whatever because I was trying to work on myself. If I'm just some baseball player, 
then I'm just gonna have some chick that just wants a baseball player because he's a baseball player. A lot of guys are very insecure that they married a chick and she's like a gold digger and they're like, shit, I didn't do a prenup. I just signed an $80 million deal and I think she's humping the pool boy. Like you hear this stuff in the locker room and it's like, hey, I don't know what to tell you, man. You got two kids, it's like, it's over now. You're, you're in there, like that's it. The game changes when you get to the major leagues. They always tell you, Oh, it's the same game, it's 60 feet, six inches, you know, the bases are 90 feet, that's all bullshit. 100% is bullshit. You have to learn all new skills, and you have to learn how to play that game within the game. And then also, how to not burn the candle at both ends too hard. I mean, it's fun, it's a really fun lifestyle, but some guys have way too much fun, and then they start sucking because they're like, their mind is in three o'clock in the morning mode, 24 hours a day, and that's really not a productive place Guys are screwing up all the time. Dudes are knocking up strippers, beating their wives, crashing their Lamborghinis. It's like frat house all over again out there with millions of dollars. Like that's a lot of athletes live that life, but that's not everybody. That's the thing you learn as a race car driver is being better is about making less stupid decisions. They're repairing the track or what, what happened out there? Yeah, the zero zero Mustang CJ looked like they lost it in the exit between uh, three and five, and uh, that car is toasted. The front is destroyed on it, and it looks like it hit the Armco. Avoid hitting the Armco at all costs. We won our first race. It was during spring training, and I was driving to the game. Then Andrews calls me. He's like, "Dude, we just won." I'm like, "What do you mean?" And he's like. We just won a race. We won our first Grand Am race. It was awesome. And he's like freaking out. And I'm like, yeah. Like I'm like driving in. Like I have like two dudes in the car, like two angels guys. And they're 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 like, what, what are you so happy about? I'm like, we won. And they're like, our game's in an hour and a half. And I'm like, no, my race team won. It's awesome. Like we you know we held the lead and it was cool. We came from behind in the last lap. I was more excited about that than anything else that happened that whole year. I was just like, hey, we won a race, Grand Am, man. We were on TV. This is cool. Hey, it's our best ever result. Hey, best ever result at, at Daytona. We started 21st and 22nd or something like that, and we finished 14th and 19th or 14th and 18th, so that's pretty good. This year we're ready. That's a really big thing for us because, you know, we're not a startup anymore, we're, we're established, and we had really good results last year, so I think people are expecting some bigger things from us. I know it's not a super sexy result, but this is our best result here yet, to have both cars finish like that, you know, clean, no damage. Yeah, one piece. Being a baseball player, I can walk pridefully into a boardroom and say, hey, I have this thing going on, let's work a deal. So exciting, look at that, look at him fly by.